Brands and status are one of the most vital elements within modern business success, but have always been prominent in society. From TVs to cars, clothes to consoles and prams to phones, companies spend millions upon millions each year to create, maintain and expand a brand. It can be more important sometimes than the product itself. Now, mobile phones were once dominated by Nokia. Only the older viewers will remember them as such, though. Those halcyon days of the iconic 3310 complete with snakes was a thing of beauty. But once Apple weighed in with its all-conquering combination of devices into a single intelligent one, the iPhone has sat atop the mobile market and certainly brand awareness for the majority of that time. But as Nokia aptly demonstrated, the only constant is change. Now this Honor 20 is almost identical to the Honor 20 Pro, except that has a better camera and slightly bigger storage by default, or twice the storage by default. Other than that, it's pretty much the same phone, and either of them are true contenders to the iPhone already, but it presents much better value and performance per pounds or dollar to that offering and other offerings from Apple and Samsung et al. Now at its heart beats a Kiran 980 7nm system on a chip that consists of a split 8-core RISC-based CPU comprised of a Cortex A55 and A76 CPUs, both 64-bit and utilizing the latest ARM instruction set, they run around 1.8 to 2.6 GHz maximum respectively. The big little design gives a mix of both options and as such, the cores vary in speed and performance depending on many factors. It is certainly a powerful CPU to be at the heart of a phone and no mistake. You've got to bear in mind though with mobile devices like this, such as the Switch and everything else, thermal throttling is definitely something you need to take into account. So the hotter it gets, the more the performance will reduce and again so will battery levels. Now these feed the Mali G76 MP10 GPU running at 720MHz with approximately a half a teraflop of FP16 performance or around 230 gigaflops of full fat FP32. It's approximately 30 or 40 game cubes taped together or close to Nintendo Switch levels of GPU performance in undocked mode. Not bad for a tiny multi-function device with a 6.2 inch LCD screen. The GPU sports 10 cores, hence the name, with the full GPU having twice that possible, so this is a safe bin level for consistency. It fully supports OpenGL, DirectX 12 and Vulkan, making it a true high-class GPU that can support a vast array of software, APIs and emulators. Now these all share access to a single pool of 6GB of LPBDDR4X RAM with approximately 34GB of bandwidth, around 9GB per second or 36% more bandwidth than Nintendo's premier handheld console. 128GB of storage wraps up a complete and very powerful device that could deliver high desktop performance of only a few years ago. This can be expanded with microSD cards if you fill your phone with selfies, snapchats and fun filled videos. It is a sleek, solid and slight piece of technology. A smooth curved edge gives it that modern iPhone X design, super thin bezel, bright responsive screen and an almost instantaneous fingerprint recognition sensor on the side that doubles as the power button. Above this is the volume controls which can take a conscious press at times to respond. The screen has a resolution of 1080 by 2340 at 60Hz alongside HDR support. You can watch Netflix or YouTube with the brightest colours. Nit levels and depth are good with strong blacks giving high contrast across a variety of tested media. Compared to other recent devices it is exceptional. I would argue though that on such a relatively small device UHD and even HDR are of a lower priority and the gap from the best to worst is of a significantly smaller impact overall. And this has come true in my tests as well as just general observations. That said, the Honor 20 keeps its honor here with a premium display and responsive touch controls.
Connections are minimal with a single USB-C connector at the bottom, delivering fast charging and also doubling up as the headphone jack via the included converter. These super slim devices come at the expense of the older, thicker analog connections, remember. The fact a free connector is included is great and it does the job, though most will pair some Bluetooth headphones which it fully supports. Alongside 4G networks from the micro SIM, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Huawei Share, completing a competent package of connection methods is the screen share that allows you to cast your screen wirelessly to most modern TVs at 1080-30. A USB-C to HDMI cable does not currently work, I did try, but I'm sure it is physically possible if better speeds and quality were needed, of which the phone can easily support. You could even connect a Bluetooth controller up for that full console-like experience if touchscreen is not your thing, but on certain games this isn't an option as they are fully designed around touchscreen controls, but that doesn't mean they're not possible in the future. Many games here that I tested did support the controller, and I used it where possible. Some of the gameplay you see here, though, is me trying to use touchscreens, which I'm not the best with when you're playing something like Doom or a driving game. Now, no self-respecting phone would be complete without cameras on front and back, and it has you covered, and the quality is excellent. It sports not one, but four. Count them four cameras, so no celebrity snap or cat sleeping can go unnoticed on your social media platform of choice. The four rear cameras, a 48 megapixel main camera, a 16 megapixel super wide camera, a 2 megapixel depth camera, and then a 2 megapixel macro camera deliver bright images, strong colour, and high precision, even using the zoom function and the super wide function. As usual, the darker the subject, the more resolution and noise can show up but even for semi-professional shots and videos it ticks the box very well and there's a plethora of options in there to conform the camera to wherever the lighting environment might be even an option to put some manual depth of field effects in there but this isn't very successful at all and certainly needs more work but it could be fixed in software as i think that's where the issue generally lies the high quality design continues from the throbbing lead on top for notifications to the green lava lamp like gui that drips power up from your screen when charging. Running under Android Pie 9, the propriety EMUI or emotional interface, which is responsive with a typical grid style construction, allowing customizations from layout, dynamic wallpapers, and unlock methods to satisfy any age group of owners. AR Play is included with avatar animals tracking your head and motion alongside built in Snapchat like filters. A surprising set of choices are here from depth of field, panoramic light shows, and more to enhance your holiday snaps or just shots down the road. As a phone, it does all you need and more. Google Play will never run dry of new software and it will play almost all media and apps you can throw at it. And talking of which, we move into the testing zone, the final stage of the hardware review. In terms of battery power, I got well over a day or so using it in normal use, just using phones, watching videos, playing a few games, leaving it on the side, and leaving it on all the time. It went right through to about 27 or 28 hours without any issues at all. And that was some serious use in there. Now, if you are sitting playing games watching videos all day long then that is obviously going to diminish quite significantly and obviously over a period of time batteries always diminish but overall it's an exceptionally powerful phone that holds on to battery power much better than things like my son's iphone it's certainly beating all those and it really outperforms those as well which is an impressive piece of kit Basic hardware testing on this 7 nanometer sock, remember that reduced footprint and size does improve the power they can get out of that chip and the size and heat. So this is quite a modern piece of hardware that's been pushed out this year. It performs things like 3D Mark very well. You can see the performance levels on screen. It does an exceptionally good job and really it scores already quite high in that level compared to other competitive hardware that is more expensive. It certainly doesn't let itself down in any area in terms of 3D rendering, CPU use and physics and this track carries over into the games fortnite i know sorry not a fan but i've got to cover it because it will be a popular one 
The Honor acquits itself very well indeed. Running at a capped 30 FPS, just as the Nintendo Switch does, you can push that quality up to maximum. The resolution and the stability looks better, the visual distance and the LOD is better, and performance still stays close to that 30 FPS. There are a few dips here and there, but nothing to concern yourself about. The touchscreen controls are more of a concern than performance, and using the in-game FPS marker, you can see the levels here and the quality of the game itself. It is much better when you're transferring it to a screen or playing it on the handset directly mind this is obviously using third-party capture software which isn't the most ideal but it does give you an idea of just how good the graphics are on these games when output to a screen it is much sharper and cleaner on the handset itself mind you now I did also do some frame rate tests here using off-screen capture and this particular game uh, I think it's called Shadow Run Legends is a good game visually it's very impressive indeed and it holds on to 60 fps even at the maximum quality settings and those quality settings are really impressive for a mobile phone adding in things like shadow maps bloom specular lighting cube maps with noise maps added in motion blur on things like asphalt there's loads and loads of features on these gpus now they are really competing with hardware that's out now and certainly the xbox 360 hardware so we're getting close to the levels where if you're not a hardcore high performance gamer you could probably get one of these phones hook it up to your tv with a wireless controller and use it as a home console system and a media streaming system and therefore you could also stream things like google stradia playstation now and xbox all of those options are available here on this mobile device that for me is a very impressive piece of kit but it does well playing games locally like i say this game here is a very impressive title in terms of visual quality. Once you ramp it up to maximum, I was very impressed with a title that plays similar to a combination of Halo, Destiny, and maybe Fortnite with all the loot boxes flashing up. It's not my cup of tea, but then again, I'm well aware not everything out there needs to be everyone's cup of tea, and that's absolutely fine. There's a huge selection of titles here that you can test. I even went back and played Rayman Legends, which looks stunning on this on the handset. The crisp, sharp, bright colours really amplify the quality of the phone here. And and then you've got retro titles you can play things like mario run you can play sonic the hedgehog streets of rage all running at a clean smooth 60 fps on your handheld and again using that remote controller it's pretty much a retro console hybrid in your hands you can then go onto the stores look at all the retro emulators available there you can even play doom on this but that's obviously a given you can pretty much play doom on a doorbell but it runs well it's 535 fps it looks great it would run all the major dooms which are available on the google play store as well so in terms of games i was actually quite impressed dipping into this things like pez here it looks okay it runs at 60 fps it's on a phone it could be better they could definitely push the visual quality more here but what you've got is an impressive looking title on technology that costs around 350 pounds that really is a great bargain and long-term use for a device where you can travel to work, use it as a video phone, use it as a work phone, do work on it if you wanted to, connect up wireless devices including a keyboard and a controller. It pretty much is a jack of all trades and when I'm traveling, some of the games on here will actually keep me occupied for a good period of time and it looks superb playing them on that sharp, crisp screen which is one of the highlights of the actual device itself. Playing HDR content movies looks brilliant on it. I've got no complaints at all. There is a little bit of ghosting when you catch the screen and slow it down on camera footage, but overall, the human eye doesn't really pick up on that. And if you did this on any LCD, maybe OLED screens as well, you would see some levels of ghosting depending on the camera itself. So the quality is good enough to not cause any concerns. And it is one of the best screens I've used on a phone. Combined with its seven nanometer sock, the mixture of big and little CPUs gives it the best balance of power and battery life, which really it achieves exceptionally well across long distance of play. I never had any problems at all. And if you're doing low levels of performance, such as spreadsheets or desktop work, or even browsing the internet or watching movies, then it means you get much better battery life and you're not maxing out those GPUs and those faster cores on the A76, which are designed for much heavier workloads, such as games and physics. And as you can see, along with that GPU, they do a more than admirable job. And right now I can say nothing better than the Honor 20 is, in my opinion, the best bang for your book phone you can buy in 2019. And that draws another video to a close. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. This is a part-time gig, but hopefully this was enjoyable and informative. And I'll catch you on the next one.